Let us now look at this question. Name the enzyme that converts starch into maltose. A. Is it amylase? B. Maltase? C. Lipase? Or D. Protease? Well, we know that during the process of digestion, all complex polymers or, you know, molecules get broken down to simple substances or monomers. Carbohydrates will get converted to monosaccharide, that is polysaccharide gets converted to monosaccharides. Proteins will get broken down to amino acids. Lipids will get broken down to fatty acids and glycerol. Nucleic acids will get broken down to the sugars and the uh, nitrogenous bases. So when you're looking at carbohydrates such as the polysaccharides such as starch, this is broken down in the mouth itself. So digestion begins in the mouth itself. So carbohydrates are a set of enzymes that converts polysaccharides into disaccharides and monosaccharides. Now some of the carbohydrates include amylase, maltase, cellulase. These are all the different types of carbohydrates. So like I told you, the starch gets acted upon by the salivary amylase. Now, this is an enzyme that is present in the saliva, secreted by the salivary glands. Salivary amylase is also called as tylen. P is silent. Okay. So, this polysaccharide gets broken down into maltose, which is a disaccharide. Okay. And isomaltose also, which is a disaccharide. And alpha-dextrin. So, amylase, which is Amylase, which is secreted by the salivary glands and the pancreas, convert starch into maltose. Then what happens? Maltase further breaks down maltose into the monosaccharide, that is into glucose. Okay. Lipase. Now lipase acts upon lipids. This breaks the triglycerides into diglycerides, monoglycerides and finally into fatty acids and glycerol. Protease are enzymes which act upon proteins. They break down the proteins into peptones, into, uh, into, they break down the proteins into polypeptides and finally into simple amino acids. So now, when you look at this question, name the enzyme that converts starch into maltose is A, amylase, right? You have salivary amylase. Or you also have amylase of the pancreatic juice. So A is the right answer. B, C and D you can eliminate. Let's now look at this question. Trypsin, chymotrypsin and carboxypeptidase are examples of A, lipases, B, carbohydrases, C, proteases or D, none of the above. Well, one thing that is very clear is that option A, B and C are all names of enzymes. Why are we talking about enzymes? Because digestion, that is the breaking down of complex substances into simple substances so that they can be absorbed into the body, is always under the influence of enzymes, which is why it is also called as chemical digestion. So these complex substances include carbohydrates, proteins, lipids. Accordingly, you have carbohydrates which act upon the complex carbohydrates, breaks them down into monosaccharides. Then you have the proteinases or proteases which acts upon the proteins and breaks them down to amino acids. And then you have the lipases which acts upon the lipids and breaks them down into fatty acids and glycerol. Okay, it breaks it down into fatty acids and glycerol. So these enzymes play a very important role in digestion. Now, trypsin, chymotrypsin and carboxypeptidases are different types of proteases. They help in breaking down the proteins into smaller polypeptides and peptides. And then when you look at lipases, like I told you, they break down the triglycerides into diglycerides, monoglycerides and finally glycerol and fatty acids. Carbohydrates are a group of enzymes which break down the complex sugars such as the polysaccharides into disaccharides and then finally into monosaccharides. And some of the examples include amylase, maltase, sucrase. Okay, so now which is the right option for this question? Trypsin, chymotrypsin and carboxypeptidases are all examples of what? Is it lipases? No. Carbohydrates? Definitely no. 
It is of proteases. So C is the right option. You can eliminate A, B and D. C is the right option. Let us now look at this question. What is the use of HCL secreted by the stomach? A. Converts pepsin to pepsinogen. B. Does not help in the digestion of protein. C. Converts pepsinogen to pepsin. Or D. Helps in the survival of bacteria. Well, HCL which is secreted by the parietal cells or the oxyntic cells found in the gastric glands lining the stomach, you know the epithelial cells of the stomach, is the major what do you say is the major component which gives an acidic environment to the stomach. The pH of the stomach is much below 7, highly acidic. Now, why is it so necessary for the stomach environment to be acidic? That is because protein digestion takes place here. Now, for protein digestion to take place, we need a very important enzyme that is called as pepsin. Now, this Pepsin is found in an inactive form, okay, an inactive form called a zymogen or pepsinogen. This pepsinogen becomes active only when there is HCL. So, in the presence of HCL, it becomes active and of course, 44 amino acids are released, okay. And only when pepsin is active, only when pepsin is active does protein digestion begin. So, pepsin digests the proteins by breaking them down into proteoses and peptones. Okay, and HCL does not help in growing bacteria. In fact, it helps to destroy bacteria and other harmful microorganisms. So, now when you look at this question, what is the use of HCL secreted by the stomach? You can eliminate A. It does not convert pepsin to pepsinogen. It's the other way around. It does not help in the digestion of proteins. No, it helps. So, this is also incorrect. Converts pepsinogen to pepsin. So, C is correct. Helps in the survival of bacteria. Absolutely wrong. It destroys them. So, A, B and D we can eliminate. C is the right answer. Let's now look at this new question. Pepsin present in gastric juice helps to A. Combine amino acids to form protein. B. Activate pepsinogen. C. Break down protein to peptides. D. Protect the stomach lining. Well, pepsin is uh, pepsin is part of the enzymes that are found in the gastric juice. Now, the gastric juice, which is secreted by the gastric glands lining the epithelium, lining the stomach, inner lining of the stomach, it is made up of HCl the hydrochloric acid which gives an acidic environment to the entire stomach, pepsinogen, the inactive form of pepsin, mucus which you know sort of lubricates and of course lipase, the enzyme that acts upon lipids. Now this pepsin which is found in the inactive form is converted to active form in the presence of HCL. So pepsinogen becomes pepsin. Pepsinogen is also called as zymogen. Okay. Now, this pepsin helps breaking down the complex protein, a polypeptide into, right? It breaks down protein into proteoses and peptones. Lipases help to break down lipids. Lipids get broken down to diglycerides, monoglycerides, and finally, fatty acids and glycerol molecules. Now, the mucus protects the epithelial lining of the stomach. Why is it so important? Because HCL is present. So, what is the right answer here? Pepsin present in gastric juice helps to break down proteins to peptides. It does not combine amino acids to form protein. No, doesn't activate pepsinogen. What activates? HCL. Incorrect. Protects the stomach lining. What protects the stomach lining? Mucus. So, A, B and D you eliminate. C is the right option. A new question for you. What do you understand by the term emulsification? A, formation of fats. B, breakdown of proteins into amino acids. C, digestion of carbohydrates. D, large lipids broken down into small lipid droplets. Well, for you to understand emulsification, first I have to tell you about bile. Bile is a juice that is secreted by the liver. Now, this helps in the digestion of fats or lipids. Now, what? how does it do? It breaks down the triglycerides by a process called as emulsification. 
Emulsification is nothing but, see, look at this, a large fat globule is broken down by the bile salts. Okay, bile salts which are present in the bile juice. There are different types of bile salts. It breaks it down into small droplets called as missiles. So the lipid globules are broken down to small droplets called as missiles. Why? So that it becomes more soluble in water and it can be easily broken down by the lipase enzyme. So that finally the triglyceride gets broken down into the glycerol and fatty acid which can later of course be absorbed into the body. So in this question what is the right answer? What do you understand by the term emulsification? Large lipids are broken down into small lipid droplets called as missiles. Okay so that they can become more soluble in water. So you can eliminate A, B and C. D is the right option.